Hi everyone, welcome back to the next session of the day. I hope you all navigated the itinerary area well. Um, as I mentioned in the last session before, uh, unfortunately Khalid from the UAE wasn't able to join us um, straight away today. Uh, there was a slight technical issue on his side, so unfortunately we couldn't get him to jump on live but it's fine because we have a really great presentation now from alexander smart who's from dark trace and he'll be sharing his insights on operational integrity and everything to do with safeguarding your ot systems with cyber ai um, which i'm sure is a really interesting topic for everyone here today um, and i for one am really looking forward to hearing it so i am going to start alexander's presentation for you all now um, and i hope you all enjoy it and then at the end um Alex will be on to do a live Q&A. So please, if you have questions for Alex, make sure you pop them in the discussion forum um, or in the live Q&A box. And at the end of the session, we'll answer them live for you. So any questions regarding the presentation, make sure you put them in and we can discuss them at the end of the presentation. So with that being said- Good I'm morning, everyone. Thanks for joining to me today. Good morning. My name is Alexander Smart from Darktrace. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Darktrace are the world leaders in cyber AI technology. Essentially, what our founders developed just over six and a half years ago was a core AI engine that rapidly learns and understands what's normal for an environment. And based on that, we're able to identify a threat. Since the founding of the company, we've now grown to serve over 4,000 customers around the world. And one of our first customers was in fact Drax. The platform was used there to defend against attacks, not only in their IT environment, but also in their OT environment. So the roots of the company are very well embedded into the OT community. Uh, and we've seen this increase over the last few years in Australia as well. Now as IT and, and security and OT professionals, I don't need to sort of remind you too much about the evolving attack landscape that we've seen. Um, but even since the company was founded six and a half years ago, the scale and severity and the technology that these latest attacks are using um, really is un unprecedented. It's unbelievable to see how quickly they've evolved. Uh, and what we've seen as a consequence of that is existing legacy approaches not being able to keep up. Um, geopolitical tensions have not helped this at all. Uh, you know, state-sponsored attacks essentially mean that organisations and cyber criminals now have the latest technologies at their disposal to mount attacks against, for example, critical infrastructure. Uh, in Australia, we saw this sort of hit the press in 2020 um, as it started to increase on, on the radar. Uh, and become a point of major concern for, for the government and the country as a whole. Uh, we've seen attacks like, for example, in the Ukraine power grid in 2015, 2016, with our uh, with the cyber criminals have also shifted their focus. Uh, they've previously been focused on IT and data. We've now started to see a rise in OT and operational impact. We saw this uh, over the last sort of 12, 18 months where whole manufacturing plants have been taken down and held to ransom. These attacks are completely devastating for those organizations. And what we're also seeing is those cyber criminals aren't even necessarily you know, being discriminatory on it. They go after OT or IT. They've obviously honed their skills in the IT environment, but now they're learning that actually the same techniques they've learned there can now apply to the OT side of an environment. And the reason this really is possible is because the OT and IT are no longer disparate systems. Um, they're very much integrated. So, you know, an attacker would be compromises in the IT environment can now move to the OT environment and vice versa. This has also posed a challenge for the teams that are built to protect these systems. Previously, security teams were very much focused on the IT side, you know, protecting that, building up the walls, building up the perimeter security. Typically, the OT environment would be air gapped. And now they're being asked to take on responsibility and to cover the OT side of the environment as well. Often there's a bit of a skills gap here uh, and it's been publicised in the last two weeks in Australia, the growing IT and especially security skill shortage that we have in Australia. Uh, so even if companies do want to invest and they want to bring more people on board from a security point of view, they're finding it hard to find the talent um, and therefore the cost of that talent is increasing because there's just so much demand. So a combination of all these factors uh, really mounts what could be considered a, an impossible task when defending OT environments, which is where Darktrace um, looks to AI to help organisations uh, both, you know, reduce the time required to investigate 
and, and alert, but also identify these attacks in the earliest stages before they cause business disruption. And the reason Dark Trace is relying on AI is because the adversaries are starting to use it. They're using basic machine learning. Uh, we've seen an attack where the malware has learned the normal behavior of a device and tries to mimic that. So therefore it's able to exfiltrate greater data or move laterally within the network without going, um, going undetected. Command and control, obviously this is something that typically triggers um, alarms within an environment if they see you know, command and control going back and forth to an unknown endpoint or from a device that doesn't typically um, do that sort of behavior. But by having these, this intelligent malware that's able to move within an environment and not activate until it's at a designated target, has also meant that these attacks can very much go undetected. Uh, we're seeing the average attack length now being over 160 days. So it's not the smash and grab. These attackers are taking their time, especially the state sponsored ones. We're finding they're much more patient. They're happy to be in an environment for a year before they actually cause any damage or, or let their presence be known. So what Darktrace saw even six and a half years ago is that the legacy approach, uh, you know, the building up of a perimeter wasn't cutting it anymore. We've seen even in the last year, if someone wants to get into an organization or an OT environment, they're going to get in. Uh, whether it's by exploiting a zero day, finding a back door, um, or activating some old malware that might already be dormant in the environment, they'll work out a way to bypass that perimeter security. And previously, internal visibility has really been a bit of a black hole for organizations. Specifically true in SCADA environments where a lot of the SCADA customers I speak to, you know, prior to them installing Darktrace, they had technicians or consultants come in to their SCADA environment, plug in a device, do an update, monitor the environment and then leave. Uh, and the security and IT and the, even the OT engineers just sort of had to trust that what those technicians were doing or those contractors were doing was above board and, and even maybe those contractors might not be malicious, but their device might've already been infected. And then that malware that's on their device is able to jump into the OT environment. So visibility really was a major problem, um, which is where Dark Trace's solution on, on day one is able to help organizations increase their, their visibility. So the legacy approach of, of rules and signatures, uh, organizations that are reliant on rules and signatures are essentially playing whack-a-mole. Those security vendors are constantly updating that database of known bads whether it's using AI legitimately, we're able to identify the unknown unknowns. So things that don't register on any database around the world of, of known bads. Also the, like I mentioned, the skill shortage. So having AI to free up teams to work on more high value tasks uh, is hugely important as well, because regardless of the size team I speak to, one common theme is they're all busy. They've always got five, six projects on the go at any one time at a minimum. Uh, they're being pulled in 10 different directions. So their time is precious. Um, and by having an AI there to do at least some of the heavy lifting for them is a huge relief. And also knowing that the AI can monitor their environment and identify anything uh, that might be potentially malicious without them manually trawling through logs. Uh, logs, you know, by definition, it's historic data. So they're looking in the past to identify an attack, whether it's AI is able to identify in, in real time. It's also able to extend the visibility across the whole environment. I mentioned before, you know, OT and IT aren't two separate environments anymore. They're very much interlinked. So having a technology that can look across both these environments to identify anomalous and therefore potentially malicious behavior is hugely powerful. Some of our customers overseas are starting to do more of their workload in the cloud, especially for the OT customers. This has been a new shift uh, in the last year or two that we've seen, it hasn't really taken off too much here in Australia yet with OT customers doing more workload in the cloud, um, especially for that OT side of the organization. But we expect to see this trend growing in Australia as well over the next 18 to 24 months. So Darktrace's approach to this problem around security uh, was to take an immune system approach. So the human immune system, uh, when you're born, doesn't understand all the diseases and pathogens that are gonna come at you throughout your life, but it understands what healthy and normal feels like. And this is essentially what Darktrace has built for SCADA environment. A system that rapidly learns and understands what's normal for an environment. And then based on that, it's able to identify threat. We have our anti module, which is our autonomous response capability. 
And what this means is it can actually fight back to bring that device back to its normal pattern of life. The best way to think about that is because we have such an innate understanding of what's normal for that device and have built a sense of self around that, we can only we only block the specific malicious connections. So we're not an endpoint agent. Uh, like you guys would know, you know, OT environments are typically filled with devices that are built for very discrete tasks, often not with security in mind. Um, so endpoint agents are almost impossible to roll out across an OT environment, which is where sitting at the network level uh, really puts its head and shoulders above, you know, other organisations that are trying to play in the OT IT space. It also means that we're passively ingesting all that raw network traffic, which for your environment is the source of truth. We're not reliant on third party information. We're not comparing an OT environment data against another OT environment on the other side of the world. We're learning specifically for that environment to build a sense of self. Now, this is only possible through AI and unsupervised machine learning. And that's what our customers rely on on a day to day basis. At a high level, this is the platform that delivers that technology. The bottom row there just speaks to the fact that the AI is capable of having visibility across all parts of your environment, whether it's OT, cloud, or on-premise networks. And what that allows for is self-learning detection. So that enterprise immune system that I spoke about just a second ago, rapidly learning and understanding, and based on that is able to identify anomalies. Once it identifies an anomaly, it's then able to hand off to our cyber AI analysts. Now, to be honest, this is my favorite feature in Darktrace. Uh, this AI was actually the result of three years investment into R&D for us where we took supervised machine learning and trained it over how our analysts in Cambridge actually used Darktrace, how they investigated alerts, how they responded, what information they looked for, where they clicked, and what information they then acted on. This was then all boiled up into a feature called the Cyber AI Analyst, and our customers that are using this are reporting a 92% reduction in triage time. So again, for a team that's always stretched for time, it's a huge value add for them. And then obviously anti-gena. Uh, to be honest, for a lot of our OT customers, they rarely have this in full autonomous mode, but they might have it in human confirmation mode, where our AI will determine the appropriate response and then ask a human, we've identified this, would you like to take this response? And with one click, they can say yes or no, um, or they can go back to their workstation and, and investigate a bit more before deciding what action to take. But knowing that you know there's an AI there constantly learning and understanding, alerting, and then also responding is hugely powerful. I mentioned AI analysts was my favorite feature. So I'm just gonna jump into a quick demo and show you sort of what this looks like, what real AI looks like um, in an environment. For a lot of my customers, the first time I show them Darktrace, uh, it really is a bit of a step change in how they think about security and AI. Obviously, a lot of organizations are talking about AI. Uh, a lot of organizations are playing with it on the edges, trying to work out how to get the best business value out of it. Darktrace is a legitimate AI solution for the security problem. So if you look here across the bottom, you've got the AI analyst tray. This is what you'll see if you log into Darktrace. You'll notice the UI is, is highly intuitive. Uh, I mentioned earlier the skills gap. So the users of this really varies uh, depending on the organization we're talking to. I've had some organizations that have upskilled SCADA engineers to now monitor their environment that they're responsible for through Darktrace. We've had security analysts that have previously solely been responsible for IT start to use Darktrace to monitor the OT environment with a very low learning curve. We've also got customers that started their journey with us in IT and expanded to OT and have been able to use those same resources across both sides of the environment. We've also just had IT teams um, start to take a more active role in security and start to monitor these, these environments. So what you can see here with this alert, is or this AI analyst is it's done all the investigation for you. Everything you're seeing here on screen is with no human intervention, and it's written a summary in plain English um, that really anyone can understand. You don't need to be technical, really. You can get a grasp straight away on okay, should I investigate this further, or is this ex expected behaviour that's out of the normal, or should I go and have a chat to you know the engineer that I know was working on this device yesterday? You can see here we identified patient zero. Um, and can bring up more information about that. This sort of highlights the level of visibility we have by sitting at that network level and learning from that source of truth for your environment. Some more information here. We've got a timeline here across the top of the attack. Now, 
when I talk about the average attack length now being sort of, you know, over 160 days, this timeline is hugely powerful because we might have an attack or the start of an attack that triggered an alert maybe three months ago. Uh, and then there's been some light reconnaissance and now, you know, there's been the next phase in the attack, which we can see is constantly being mapped to the attack kill chain. And dark faith will patch these disparate bits of information together. If we click through to the next phase of the attack, you can see here again a summary in plain English and to highlight the level of visibility and the level our AI is going to, to investigate and analyze an individual incident as a starting off point and then looking across the rest of the environment, you can see here the observed chain of possible lateral movement. So the interesting thing about this is this device is where we first saw you know, some anomalous behavior, but the AI analyst through its investigation actually worked out that this was probably the patient zero for the attack. This is where the attack started and then progressed and moved laterally in the environment to this device. Then went from there to this workstation and all the way down to the pump. Now, the interesting thing about this is we can understand um, a lot of the protocols, especially the popular ones like Modbus, and we've even developed uh, some in-house capability to understand more proprietary ones um, at customers' requests. We have a customer in Australia actually that asked us to take a look at a proprietary um, one and, and we're able to now serve that up for them, which our, which our devs love getting their hands on and, and dirty. So essentially what you can see here is this lateral movement. Now, these devices talking to each other, it's completely normal. It happens every day, There's nothing out of the ordinary of the fact that they're, they're talking to each other. But what was anomalous was the behavior here. And then we were able to see that some specific commands that were coming through here weren't normal for these two devices. This followed by this lateral movement is what really raised the alarm for this specific attack. And you can see here, we've got the timeline across the top. Um, like I said, this is my favorite feature of, of Dark Trace because it really highlights you know, how far we're pushing with AI. Uh, a lot of organizations are still focused on that detection piece. We've now moved beyond detection and are doing that investigation. So detection is one thing to save time for your team, um, but doing that analysis and investigation is a whole nother step change uh, when it comes to monitoring the security of OT environments that really is only possible through the use of, of AI. I'll pause here. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to shout out uh, and we can go from there. Great, thank you so much, uh, Alex and Dark Trace for that really awesome presentation um, on safeguarding OT systems with say, cyber AI um, and the AI analyst capability that you guys have. So guys, everyone listening in, we've got Alex here um, this morning to answer some questions um, off the back end of that presentation. And I kind of wanted to give a bit of a, bit of a rundown on Alex um, and who he is and where he comes from before we kick off. So Alex is actually team lead at Dark Trace and he specializes in working with companies across all sectors to secure their OT and IT environments um, and through the use of artificial intelligence. So Alexander enjoys demonstrating to companies AI live in their environment for the first time and allowing them to augment their teams, freeing up time to focus on more high value tasks. Um, and prior to joining Dark Trace, Alex worked for Accenture uh, with a number of clients to transform their business from legacy platforms to Industry 4.0, including digital twins. Um, and cybersecurity was a key focus of his work, which enabled companies to get actionable insights out of their security and IT data through the use of machine learning. So, guys, we have a bit of a whiz here, a uh, bit of a guy who knows all with us this morning. So definitely recommend asking questions now while you can. Um, and so to kick off the questions, Alex, the question that we have for you is, um, does the AI analyst replace a human analyst? <laughs> Great question. Uh, it often comes up on, on where it sits within their existing security stack. The short answer is for customers that already have a dedicated security analyst, um, it doesn't. It, it's an extra, essentially an extra set of hands for them um, that helps augment their role so they can focus on more high value tasks. Uh, for our customers that don't have a dedicated security analyst for their SCADA environment, this really is a step change for how they um, identify, investigate and respond to security incidents. So yeah, I hope that sort of helps answer the question. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, another question that we have for you is, does this package have to be configured to the specific SCADA environment? Yeah, so essentially what we'll do is we'll drop in a physical appliance um, that passively port mirrors off that network to understand specifically for that environment uh, what's normal and that's how we're able to identify threats. So we're not training the ML or the AI in the lab and then setting it loose in your environment. We're learning specifically for the environment in which we're deployed because like you can imagine, every sort of SCADA environment we deploy into is, is different from the last. Yeah, absolutely. And I think SCADA security is definitely becoming quite a hot topic. I mean, it has been a hot topic for a, a number of years now, um, but definitely over time. So I would be keen to find out how um, dark traces, you know, worked alongside upcoming security regulation um, and that changing and kind of constantly revolving change on how security needs to be regulated within operational environments. So how has Darktrace worked alongside all of that and kept up to date and like what do you guys offer in that sense? Yeah, absolutely. We've definitely noticed a bit of a step change in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, especially with the Australian government starting to come out and talk about, you know, protecting critical infrastructure, for example. Um, so previously our conversations were very much SCADA, IT led, and then they pushed the security agenda sort of up the chain. Um, now we're finding the questions are starting at the board and executive level and, and coming down the chain. Um, so it's much more interesting conversations, to be honest, um, because boards and execs have really bought in to, to security as part of the agenda. And like you said, um, it's really the change in regulations and then legislation that's pushing that. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. A question that we have is, on average, how much time would you expect a SCADA engineer to spend looking at dark trace each day? Great question. Uh, it really depends how big the environment is. Um, you know, smaller single sites, we have those sorts of customers all the way up to customers that are managing sort of 10 to 15 sites. Um, for the smaller customers, you know, with the AI analyst, they're logging in once a day over their morning coffee to have a bit of a pulse check on the environment and they're going about their, their role. For the larger customers that have maybe, you know, sort of 15 sites, a dedicated SOC, um, obviously they have, you know, full-time security personnel that are checking dark trace at, along with other security feeds they might have. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, is setup done on site? Yes, so we can do a physical appliance or a virtual appliance. It just depends on the sort of environment we're deploying into. Um, traditionally, we've sent an engineer on site to help with the install of these appliances, but given COVID, it's all sort of done virtually now. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. And I think, what advice would you give to um, you know, SCADA engineers or those who are looking to, that, that exec level people who are looking to expand their um, cyber AI capabilities when it comes to safeguarding their OT systems and, you know, looking towards potentially investing in further solutions and technologies like the cyber AI, the AI analyst capability. What advice would you give to companies looking to do that in terms of like starting off um, and what kind of do they need in order to, to kick things off and get things moving? Absolutely. I guess just be clear on your priorities and what you're trying to achieve. Um, we talk to a lot of organisations where they don't even have visibility into their SCADA environment and Darktrace is the first tool that's actually given them that visibility across their whole environment. Um, then they've obviously got the security detection layer, but visibility is, is the first and foremost most important thing for those organisations. So that's a nice starting point for organisations that already have that vetted down. Then obviously that speed um, of responding and what they do when they receive an alert um, is, is sort of the next step there. Yeah. Um, does the appliance need external network connectivity or can it be used as a standalone unit? It can be used as a standalone unit. It doesn't need an outbound connection, if I've understood the question correctly. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, if the person who asked that has anything more to elaborate on, please let us know. Um, so does anybody else uh, in our attendee area have anything else they'd like to ask? Uh, Alex this morning while we're here so please feel free to put questions in now um, and we'll ask them because we've gotten through the first set of questions that I wanted to ask you this morning so is there any more from the audience while we've got a couple more minutes left to answer them we'll just give it a moment and then if not we may, may end the day earlier but um, we'll see Alex, is there anything else you'd like to add on the discussion point? Anything else you'd like to kind of 
draw on or to speak to when it comes to the the tools or you know the operating environments or the implementation or the rollout or anything like that while we're here no there were some great questions there i think the implementation one is always an interesting conversation um that really is best spoke to the sort of organization we're looking at deploying in especially because a lot of the time this is the first time you know an organization's implementing ai into their environment um so yeah those conversations are always interesting so if anyone's interested in sort of exploring how we could deploy um further please feel free to reach out yeah absolutely guys um if you guys wanted to connect um post event um you can absolutely do so there's always ways to do that and um i've got a question actually that's popped up thank goodness so is there ongoing management for ai ongoing management so the dev team works hard obviously the platform that was released six and a half years ago is not the same platform you, you see today so there is r d constantly going on in the background um the ai is constantly learning specifically for your environment so it's not like we do a baselining period of three to six months and then everything outside of that is normal um i'm sorry abnormal it's constantly learning and, and understanding yeah fantastic well as i was saying um Guys, if you do come up with something or if you do have a question for Alex, post event um, or for the team at Darktrace, uh, you can absolutely reach out to them. They're always available to help um, with any questions that you have. So uh, you can do that through the different um, connections that you have. You know, Alex, I'm sure, is always open to a LinkedIn connection, um, but also you can reach out. Uh, there is a link um, available in our post on demand sessions to access Data Trace um, and their website where you can ask them any questions that you like. So we'll make that um, available to you guys post event um, and you guys can speak to them directly. But um, if there is anything else, we will wrap this session up a bit early, a couple minutes early, um, but that's okay. So, uh, Alex, if there isn't anything else on your end that you'd like to add, um, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing that presentation with us. Um, it was really great to hear your insights um, and thank you for coming on and answering those questions. We really appreciate having you. Thanks so much and thanks to you guys for organizing such a great event. It's been great. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Not a problem. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Darktrace, as well, for sponsoring as well. So um, thank you for doing that, because without you guys, we wouldn't have events on platforms like this. So really appreciate having you on, um, and thank you for that as well. So the next thing that we're going to jump on to today, everybody, um, we're going to be moving on to a panel discussion, which is the next session below in the agenda page. And that is between Bettina Pickering from Cooper's Brewery and Alan Doherty from Dalrymple Bay Coal Terminal. Um, so we will be discussing SCADA security and kind of continuing that discussion further. So make sure you jump onto that next session now. We'll be kicking off at 10.10. So we've got a couple minutes to go quick toilet break, grab a drink of water, get a coffee, um, and then we'll see you back on the platform at 10.10 in that session.